The Kibul Lamjiao National Park is a national park in the Bishnupur district of the state of Manipur in India. It is 40 square kilometers, 15.4 square miles in area, the only floating park in the world, located in northeast India and an integral part of Loktak Lake. The national park is characterized by many floating decomposed plant materials locally called thumdus. To preserve the natural refuge of the endangered Manipur elds deer or brow antler deer service LD LD, or Sangai also called the dancing deer, listed as an endangered species by IUCN, the park which was initially declared to be a sanctuary in 1966, was subsequently declared to be a national park in 1977 through a Gazette notification. The act has generated local support and public awareness. The film The Return of Sangai Manipuri Sangai Halakpa by the Manipur Forest Department gives a deep insight of Sangai and Kibul Lamjau National Park. Topic: History. The brow antler deer, which was first discovered in Manipur in 1839 and named service LD-LD in 1844 in honour of Lieutenant Percy Eld, a British officer, was reported an extinct species in 1951. It was rediscovered in the Kibul Lamjau Park area by the environmentalist and photographer EPG, which necessitated declaring this reserve park area as a national park to protect and conserve the deer now called Elds deer's subspecies Brow Antler Deer service LD -LD or Sangai in Maiti language to distinguish it from the other two subspecies found in Burma and Thailand that are called service LD Thaman and service LD Siamensis and also in Cambodia, China, Laos, Thailand, Vietnam and Hainan Island. It has a pride of place in the folklore and culture of the Manipur state and is the state animal of Manipur. From a small herd of 14 deer in 1975, its population was reportedly 155 in 1995 and as per the latest wildlife census conducted in March, April 2016 its number rise to 260. <laughs> Geography and topography The park is a swamp established by Man Sharma with floating mass of vegetation created by accrual of organic garbage and biomass with soil particles that has been thickened into a solid form called fumdus, at the southeastern side of the Loktak Lake, which has been declared a Ramsar site. Two-thirds to three-fourths of the total park area is formed by fumdus. A waterway through the park provides year-round access by boats plying through the Loktak Lake, to the Pabot Hill in the north. The reserve area of the park which was 4,000 hectares .2 acres in March 1997 was reduced to 2,160 hectares 5 .5 acres in April 1988, under pressure from the local villagers. The swamp encompasses three hills, namely, Pabot, Toya and Qingzhou that provide a refuge for the large mammals during the monsoon season. The distinctive nature of the park is that it is too deep to be marsh, too shallow to be a lake. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Ownership rights. While the area on the periphery of the park is privately owned, the park itself is predominantly state-owned and the remaining areas are divided between the tribal groups of the Thang, Brel and Merrill tribes who claim ownership rights. Hydrologic features Hydro-meteorological feature of the area is marked by the dominance of the Indian tropical monsoon with an average annual rainfall of 1,183 mm with July and August as the wettest months and February and March as the driest. The size of the park varies with the seasons as it is formed of fumdus morass of organic matter. The peripheral areas of the lake are grounded to the bed of the lake during the dry season but get almost substantially submerged for a few days during the monsoon season. It emerges and floats to the surface fully a few days later, separating from the ground. The depth of the fumdi varies from 1 foot (0.3 meters) to 4 feet (1.2 meters) and during this period the animals in the park move to higher hilly areas. About 20% of its thickness floats on the lake above the surface, which supports the weight of large mammals. 
Weather temperatures vary from a maximum of 34.4 degrees Celsius .9 degrees Fahrenheit in summer to a minimum of 1.7 degrees Celsius .1 degrees Fahrenheit in winter. Humidity was a recorded high of 81% in August with a minimum of 49% in March. <laughs> Flora and fauna The park, primarily composed of moist semi-evergreen forests, has a rich amalgam of aquatic, wetland and terrestrial ecosystem. The grassland structure of the park is divided into three zones. Aquatic flora Aquatic flora recorded in the park include Zizania latifolia, wild rice, Ishing kambong, Saccharum munja, koimam, S. bengalensis, Aranthus precaris, Singnang, Dioscaria bulbifera, Fumha, Cynodon dactylon, Tinthau, Alpinia galangia, Pulley, Acornia crassipes, Cabocong, Hedicium coronarium, Locle, Nalumba nucifera, Thambel, and Phragmites carca, Tou. Some of the above listed flora had been recorded in two types of fundus, namely the Fumdia tauba, floating, and the Fum. Fundiarupa sinking, reeds, grasses, and other plants growing on a mat of dead and decaying vegetation floating on the lake surface form the Ataoba, while Fumdiarupa has mats of vegetation which have sunk to the bottom of the lake and support a rich emergent growth of reeds and grasses. In a 1960 estimate, the Fumdi vegetation had been structured into 45% Phragmites carca, 25% Arianthus ravenae elephant grass, 15% Saccharum munja, 5% S. litifolium, 5% Alpinia aluas and 2% Saccharum precarum and 3% other species, including Zizania latifolia. Zizania latifolia is the plant much relished by the Sangai deer. Acornia crassipes was a recent species in the open water areas of the swamp in the midst of polygonum buckwheat and tropa water caltrop or water chestnut. The three hills surrounding the park are now denuded of most of the vegetation. Fauna <laughs> <laughs> Apart from the brow antler deer, the Cervus LDLD Sangai, the flagship species of the park, other fauna found in the park were the following, mammals reported are the hog deer C. Porcinus, wild boar C. Scrofa, large Indian civet Vivera chivetta, Viveracula indica, common otter Lutra lutra, fox, jungle cat, golden cat, bay bamboo rat, musk shrew, common shrew, flying fox and sambar Cervus unicolor. Fishes include Channa striata, Channa punctatus, common carp, Wallago atu and pool barb. Amphibians and reptiles include the keel-back tortoise, viper, krite, cobra, water cobra, banded krite, Asian rat snake, beauty rat snake, python, Russell's viper, Deboya, checkered garter snake and common lizard, viviparous lizard. Python malorus, an endangered species, is also found in the park. Topic. Avifauna Prominent bird species recorded in the park are both migratory and resident. Some of them are the East Himalayan Pied Kingfisher, Black Kite, Lesser Sky Lark, Northern Hill Mina, Burmese Pied Mina, North Indian Black Drongos, Lesser Eastern Jungle Crow, Yellow-Headed Wagtail, Spotbill Duck, Blue-Winged Teal, Ruddy Shell Duck, Threatened Hooded Crane, Burmese Saris Saris Crane, Indian White-Breasted Waterhen and Crimson-Breasted Pied Woodpecker. Threats. Some of the identified threats to the park are elaborated below. The threats to the park are due to the permanent flooding of the park and its resultant effect on the thickness of Fumdus. The reason attributed for this is due to construction of the Itai Barrage under the Loktak Multipurpose Project in 1983 where high level of water is maintained between 768 meters (2519.7 feet) and 768.5 meters (2521.3 feet) during October to March, the dry months of the year. This has disturbed the natural cycle of floating and sinking of fundus which used to be maintained in the park. Maintenance of high water level in the lake throughout the year for Loktak Multipurpose Project has broken this annual cycle and fumdus remain floating throughout the year during dry season and are no more available to fumdi vegetation. Therefore, the growth of vegetation on fumdus and their thickness are believed to be gradually decreasing. 
Before the construction of the Loktak hydroelectric project, the Fumdas floated during flooding by backflow from the Kordak River and discharge from other streams and nalas and settled down on lake bed during dry season when water was drawn out through the same river. This resulted in enhancing of nutrients and minerals of the Fumdi vegetation from the bottom of the lake during the dry period. But this cycle has been disturbed by the Loktak hydroelectric project. One apprehension is that at some stage the Fumdus may not be able to support the number of the Elds deer or Sangai deer. The National Park and the Loktak Lake have provided sustenance through fishing, growing and collection of vegetables of economic importance to the people living in the peripheral villages and on the Fumdus. The effect of maintaining permanently high water level is stated to be a serious threat to the Fumdus and consequently to the people living on the lake, park's natural resources. Earlier, there was only marshy land in the park area but after commissioning of the hydroelectric project two ecosystems have emerged, one with water body covering one-third area and the other the Fumdus, which covers two-thirds area. Deteriorating water quality is indicated by the recorded pH values of 4 to 8.5. The reasons for poor quality are attributed to flow of a pollutants from the towns draining into the lake, b use of agrochemicals for farming in the surrounding farmland, c accumulation of water on fumdi, d deforestation and subsequent soil erosion in the catchment area and e rotting vegetation. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Conservation measures. Conservation measures suggested relate to development and implementation of a management plan giving priority to long-term conservation, monitoring the condition of habitat and to take timely corrective measures by enforcing strict protection of core areas, particularly with reference to the water level due to the Loktak hydroelectric power project. Some of the measures suggested and under implementation are elaborated as a to provide effective protection, b developing and maintaining high places with adequate protection and food material to provide protection to the animals in case of flash flood, c increasing area under fumdus in the park, d preventing theft of fumdus and flow or part of fumdus towards northern side, e stopping completely the collection of firewood, food and fodder, f creating an environment in which local people volunteer as natural custodian of sangai and other other animals in the park, g to encourage ecotourism and nature education, h to undertake, aid, promote and coordinate research works, i capacity building, training, awareness and extension activities, j launching packaging and publicity campaign and j propagating ethnic information, exhibition and so forth. Conservation measures implemented The measures that have been implemented by the Forest Department of the Manipur government are the following. A perimeter fence of 2,281 meters (7,483.6 feet) length in most vulnerable sections of the park to prevent people and domestic livestock from entering the reserve has been created. A cattle-proof trench has been dug along 870 meters (2,854.3 feet) of the boundary. Seven canoes and four checkpoints are established at strategic places for security. Army helicopter has carried out census work. The park is under the supervision of full-time forest officials. Capacity building has been achieved by exclusive placement of an assistant conservator of forests, an assistant veterinary surgeon, a ranger of forests, field assistant, three foresters, four forest guards and eight others for the park. Topic: <laughs> Visitor information. The park is approachable by road, rail and air through Imphal, the capital of Manipur. By road it is 53 kilometers 32.9 miles from Imphal and 522 kilometers 324.4 miles from Guwahati, Assam on the national highway number no. 53. Public and private transport ply on these roads. The nearest railhead is at Damapur on the broad gauge line of the Northeast Frontier Railways, which is 215 kilometers (133.6 miles) from Imphal by road. Jirabam is also a railhead on the Manipur border, which is 225 kilometers (139.8 miles) from Imphal. Daily air service is available to Imphal from major cities such as Calcutta, Delhi, Guwahati and Mumbai. Resorts under the classic hotel for family and travel loving couple are available in the Sendra Island Park which is 5 to 6 kilometers away from the national park. 
Basic accommodation of a forest rest house without boarding facilities is available at Fubala and Sendra Islands inside the park and at Morung Town 10 km miles away from the park. Staying at Imphal which has better hotel facilities is a preferred option. Visit to the park is ideal between 0600 and 1000 hours in the morning and 1530 and 1800 hours in the afternoon, when the Sangai deer comes out to feed in herds. A boat trip along the labyrinthine boat routes passing through colorful water plants would be a good way to see the park. An adventurous trip would be to take a walk through the park but the Fumdi is not a firm ground. Manipur Tourism Department arranges conducted day tours to the Loktak Lake and the Kibul Lamjau Park. Manipur is considered a sensitive border state. Earlier the foreigners entering Manipur including foreign citizens born in Manipur was needed to possess a restricted area permit, but now it has been lifted from the state. There is no permit required for foreigners coming to Manipur, they only need to register themselves in the established checkpoints i.e. Imphal Airport and Mao and Jirabam for those coming by road. Gallery Films The Return of Sangai Manipuri, Sangai Halakpa is a documentary about Kibul Lamjau National Park and Sangai made by Forest Department Manipur. The film is available in both English and Manipuri. <laughs> <laughs>